DJ Claudio. <laughs> you guys doing? You all right? I have received a lot of questions about my uh, Yamaha Nu Ange mixing desk. Here it is, in all its beauty. Let me take a look at it. Well, number one, it looks amazing. But uh, what's important today is that after having used it for about, I don't know, four or five months now, I am really starting to enjoy it in its full potential. Today I want to explain how I use it, how my studio is set up and uh, what I like about it. So firstly, in my setup, I've got this Mix 16 Faders module and this centerpiece module. This is extremely good quality. Everything is, of course, metal. As you can see, these faders are touch sensitive. So you know what? I'm gonna turn this camera down like this so that you can see exactly how this works. So one of the uh, very useful things that, that having a desk allows you to do is things like this. You select this channel, you select this channel while holding this channel. Now you got everything selected. You hit link and you go like this which is not only extremely cool, but extremely helpful because as much as I like a mouse, having a physical relationship to my tracks helps a lot. It makes the process a lot faster. But how have I got it set up? To understand that, I have to explain that this is the control section, whilst here we have the actual uh, converters. Firstly, I should be a lot more tidy, but you know, I use it in real life. So that's what happens in real life. The quality of these converters is quite astounding. These are like line inputs and outputs. This is a module with 16 preamps. The preamps on this guy are quite stunning. I should say amazing. So then you have uh, one more here, one more here. And because they all connect via the Ethernet, you can have a unit back here. You see what I'm talking about? So this is 16 more inputs and outputs, and this I use for this section of the studio. And as you can see, it goes through a simple CAT7, I believe, CAT6 or something like that. At some point, I'm gonna pass this cable through this bit here and have it all around pass through there so that I don't have to trip in it. But uh, I have been a little bit lazy. I apologize for that. But uh, you know, the thing is, it works great already. So this is the system and you may ask, how does it all come together with all these bits and bobs? So this is the Nuage work group where pretty much you can match the Cubase session with every bit and bob in the system. So you can see the Nuage Master here, the Nuage Fader here, and you can see the four Neo interfaces. If you wanna check on the Rio interface, then you pull out this baby, which is a dedicated uh, interface because, I mean, as you can imagine, you have a lot more control, like you can tell how much gain you want on each channel, and this is fantastic. So that's that. Finally, you have this piece of software which basically runs your Dante interface. You have to imagine that to run all these pieces of gear, you need a very powerful interface that goes into the computer. In this case, I'm using a dedicated Yamaha interface, which talks Dante. And Dante allows you to pretty much match through this matrix any input to any output, as you can clearly see here. Like for example, I am repeating this output. Right now I can't remember exactly why I did this, but you know, to give you an example, if I want to record and use Cubase, of course I can do that, but at the same time I want to record onto this recorder. So basically I am doubling up the output to go both to the monitors and that recorder. Let me demonstrate. So this goes out from Cubase, but it also goes into my recorder. 
I tend to use very low levels because this console is really, really silent. It's really, really clean. So I don't need to record too loud just in case, you know, sometimes I get carried away. I start banging on those keys and I want to maintain a level of headroom that prevents me from clipping. So now, how do I keep it all connected? Well, this is the great news that I have 72 inputs on the system. This allows me to literally keep everything connected at all times. And when I say at all times, I mean... Boop! 808. 909. MS20. BP550. Profit 5. And uh, my Rhodes, of course, my Moog, and, uh, and everything, in fact. Let me show you what is double grade about this. Because it runs on Cubase, every time I uh, set up a new channel, I have the chance of pressing this button, and here you can see, on the channel strip, a noise gate. So for example, this is the 606. Let's see if I can get any sound out of it, you see? So the gates are open or closed. This means that the entire system is silent. I've got 72 inputs and the whole system is completely silent. <clears throat> Let me enjoy this for a second. Don't get me wrong, I love analog desks, but being able to have 72 inputs and no noise, that's a game changer. Of course, a sophisticated system like this allow me to do things like take the roads right here and if I go to my sand, you see, I've got a whole bunch of sands here and I'm sanding, for example, to the uh, RC505. What is the RC505? This guy. So that means that I can go from my roads, for example, to the desk, back to the RC505 and back to the desk again, maintaining all the correct levels, <laughs> like this. You see what I mean? This blows my mind because I've never been able to do this. The typical situation where you are in a studio is, oh, I want to play that instrument. Wait, let me look for the cables. Okay, let's patch it in. Input, output, level. Ah, finally, I can record this thing. That time is gone. <laughs> yes, so let me show you a few interesting features because my goal is to use less and less of the computer keyboard and mouse. You see how far it is? Because I don't want to use it. So I've been making a point out of trying to use as much as possible this interface. So the transportation is inevitably the thing that you use the most when you're producing because now you can just go back and forth like this on the timeline. Say, for example, if I want to record this Rhodes, this Rhodes right here, all right? I have this channel selected. It shows it. It's the Rhodes DI. Now, this, all I need to do is hit record and then maybe, say, locate zero. And now I'm going to zero on the timeline. I just hit this guy. No, that wasn't a cue for you. Yeah, of course. You know why? Because I've synchronized it uh, for it to work with everything else through the multi-clock. But for now, I'm just gonna turn the multi-clock off. And I'm gonna do this again. Press the button undo, bang. Let's hit it again. No 
idea what that was. But one thing is for sure, I got it captured and it's right there. So now if I hit this zoom button and I move this wheel, check what happens. All right. I uh, now remove the zoom function and I go through it. I can of course play it. And if I want to remove the click, I don't have to touch this guy. All I need to do is go here and remove the click. And I'm on. But I can do more than that. I can hit, for example, the um, scrub mode. There you go, check out. DJ Claudio. <laughs> <laughs> well, admittedly, using this beautiful machine just to scratch is a little bit of an overkill, but fun nonetheless, isn't it? So as you can see, the stuff that usually would have taken me quite a few clicks, now it's just immediate. So let me see, what could I do now? Probably I could add some Minimog to this, why not? Easy peasy, lemon squeezy, remove the rack here and I have got the uh, Minimog right here. Hit rec on that one, select, just to remind me what I'm doing, and um, remove the scrub now, and hit the click button again, and hit this. I'm surprised I didn't remember the chords that I played earlier. So as you can tell, that was pretty straightforward. It was super fast. You know what I'm gonna do? I am going to connect this multi-clock again. I am going to tell the Roland to go in synchronization mode with uh, the multi-clock. Let's see if this works. <laughs> How long did that take me? <laughs> One split second and you want to check out what the best news is? I've got everything right here so if I say for example select the 808 kick drum now I am presented with that right which is also that so all I need to do is I press select here press select here bang I'm gonna go link bang I'm gonna hit record, like that. Now everything is set up. I just need to go back to the beginning. Maybe I can turn off the 808 for a second. I am going to make sure that nothing else is select. Oh, the 909 I don't need, actually. So, yeah, we got everything going. This is going. So, record. Hit that. Remove the click, stop, I can just go back and play. How long did that take me? I have an 808 recorded as separate tracks I've got my bass, I've got my roads. This idea took me one second to put down and I've got it all separate on separate channels. I could just, you know, send it off to the mastering mixing room and, uh, you know, they can finish it. <laughs> uh, actually, that's not a bad song. 
right? <laughs> the last thing I think I want to show you is the capability of adding effects to this. I'm just gonna go back, maybe remove the links. So say that, for example, I want to add some nice uh, delay to, let's say, the claps, all right? So this claps, let's go to sends. For now, I have, as a send, I've got, uh, where this is going? Oh, to medium reverb. Let's put something nicer than this. How about my 555, which is my super fancy tape delay. Let's add it all the way up. As you will notice, I have connected the um, 555 straight into the desk again, and I'm adding to the delay of the 555, I'm adding a little bit of reverb. Also, I have inserted an auto pan because the 555 is actually mono, the delay portion and, and the reverb portion of it. All I need to do is play. reminds me I was also sending the bass to it so bang there you go and this is um, how this desk has changed my life I really want to thank the lovely people at Yamaha because they allow me to use this absolute monster uh, this beauty this work of art uh, in my studio I hope I can keep on using it for much longer because it seriously changed my production life. So, having said that, I wish you a lot of beautiful inspiration, energy and uh, love for music. I invite you to watch this video next and uh, I will see you next time on this channel. Thank you.